So welcome to a quick getting started overview on ROSA, otherwise known as Red Hat OpenShift on AWS. So this is a fully managed service of Red Hat OpenShift on AWS. So before we get started, I just want to let everyone know that I found the one person that's disliked one of my videos. So within AWS, uh, the prerequisite is that you obviously have an AWS account. And within that, you've actually added or created a non-root user. So if you haven't done so already, create your account, create a non-root access account, and then you'll have to download the AWS CLI and run AWS configure. So the next thing we're going to do is enable the service within AWS. So you're going to go ahead and log into your account. And then you're going to click on the orange button that says Enable OpenShift. Now that doesn't actually deploy a cluster or anything, so don't worry about it. And then the second part, once that's that service is enabled, you'll go ahead and click on the other orange button where it says Download the CLI. And that's going to prompt you to download the ROSA command binary. So what we're going to do is deploy Rose on AWS using your AWS non-root user. And we're going to use the Rosa command to deploy it. So the first step is that you're going to download your Red Hat key token uh, and then copy that to the clipboard. So you're going to go to this link here and then copy it to the clipboard. And then the next thing you're going to do is once you've got the binary installed, you can type ROSA verify permissions, and this will verify that you have a non-root user, and if you do, it'll run fine. And then the next step after that is to type ROSA login, and then at that point, you're going to paste your Red Hat token that you got in this step previously. And then you can verify it with ROSA who am I. So once you're done with that, you can go ahead and prepare the account for cluster deployment. So for that, you'll type ROSA init. And once you've gotten this far, you can go ahead and use the ROSA command to actually deploy a cluster. So to do that, you'll type ROSA create cluster dash dash cluster name. And then you can provide any name you like. I used ROSA demo. And then after some time, you can type uh, ROSA list clusters and that'll show you the state of the cluster. Um, I ran it twice, one while it was still installing and you can see the state is installing and then once it completed I ran it again and I typed ROSA list clusters again and then it, it showed me the state as ready. So at this point I now have a full Kubernetes managed service running on AWS. So what does the topology look like exactly? Well, as you can see, we've got three master nodes, three worker nodes, and two infrastructure nodes. And each one of these nodes is running the immutable rel kernel, um, otherwise known as CoreOS. Um, it's got SE Linux enforcing enabled. It supports multi-tenancy, although in this case, we're just using it as your AWS account. Um, and then uh, it supports full over-the-air updates. So uh, AWS, in this case, is going to manage the service and, and you know, update the cluster as required. Um, and this is fully Kubernetes cert certified, obviously. Okay, so now let's assume that you've created your cluster. And the next thing you're going to want to do is access that cluster. And typically the way we access a OpenShift cluster is through the command line interface using the OC command or kubectl. Um, and then separately, you're going to want to access the OpenShift console. So before you can do all that, uh, you're going to want to use the ROSA command one more time to type ROSA create admin dash C ROSA demo. Uh, uh, dash C is just the name of the cluster that you, you provided. And the output of that command is going to be your cluster login information and the console URL. In other words, the, the uh, URL to access the web UI um, as well as the API server. So once you've got that information, uh, you can go ahead and use that to log into the cluster right from the command line. 
So you type OC login, the URL from the output, um, the username from the output, and the password from the output. Um, separately, you can now go to the console, the web UI, um, at the URL that was provided and um, provide those credentials as well. And you'll be able to log into the web UI. Now, uh, before you use the OC command, you're going to go ahead and download that binary um, from cloud.redhat.com. So that's it for the intro. Um, so now I can just show you what it looks like live. Okay, so the first thing we can do is go to the web console. And so for that, we're going to use the username and password that was provided. Okay, we can go ahead and look at the topology. And if you do that, we see that we have, um, if you click on the roll here to organize them, we have um, actually two workers, three masters, and two infra slash worker nodes. We go up to the workload section, we can see if there's any pods running. And it's a fresh install, so we don't have any workloads. Uh, you can go ahead and create a sample application just by creating a create pod and click create on the bottom and that will just run the hello world container and now if we go back to the pods you should see that it's now running Okay, so now let's go to the terminal window. And now that we've logged into the cluster using the OC login command, we can type things like OC get cluster version. And we can see we're running at 474, which is a really current version. And we can also type OC get nodes to list the same nodes that we saw in the GUI. And here you can see, we, again, we've got uh, two workers, three masters, and two infra slash worker nodes. We could do an OC get pods to see what workloads are running. And you can see the example that we ran earlier is now running here. So the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and delete the cluster if you don't have any more use for it. And just type Rosa delete cluster pass in the cluster name and use a watch at the end. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.